Well, greetings once again to my shop. It's actually January 1st, New Year's Day 2020, the first day of a brand new decade. And here we go with another video from Montana. Anyway, I was unpacking and one of the boxes I ran across was full of buffing wheels. And I thought that would be a good topic for a tip, a turning tip from my shop. I've buffed a lot of pieces over the years. And it's one of those things that you can do that really will add to your, to your work. And we'll cover that just a little bit. I'm not gonna go into great detail on this. But then I got to thinking, I also like to burnish sometimes. So what's the difference between burnishing and buffing? Well, I started doing a little bit of research and I found out how ill-informed I had been. I've got my own definition of burnishing, and I think buffing is pretty straightforward. You put a finish on something, and it could be um, a number of different finishes, usually lacquer, something like that, and then you buff it. And I'll show you my buffing wheel system, and I've got other videos on buffing. But then I started thinking about burnishing, and I did some uh, YouTube kind of research, and oh my gosh, there's, a lot of different ways you can burnish, not just on, you know, what I consider burnishing is you do it on uh, raw wood and it doesn't have a finish. Well, I, I learned that that's really not the case. So let me readjust my camera and I'll show you some examples of burnishing and buffing. All right, I'm ready to start defining burnishing and buffing, okay? And please, this is, my take on this after years of messing around with finishing, and I've done a lot of buffing, I have not done a lot of burnishing. But I'm gonna to try to define those two terms the way I see them. I've really learned that uh, when it comes to burnishing, I was a little bit mistaken in my approach to uh, my take on burnishing. Anyway, let me show you some uh, items I have in this box right here um, for buffing. And for me, and for me, that is really an easier topic because I've done a lot of buffing. I try to set up different items. This is a, a wool buffing wheel, and you can get those at automotive parts store. I can chuck this up into, uh, say, pin jaws on my lathe. I can put it in my drill press. I can use a handheld drill to do some buffing, and that works really well. Let's see what else is in this box. Here's a smaller buffing wheel. And I don't know if you can, you can see from the edge of this, I probably use this on some metal. And I need to clean this really well before I use it on more wood or a, a wooden project. And I've got all kinds of stuff in here. This is one of my buffing wheels I got from Stuart McDonald, and I'll show you my buffing setup on the other side of the room where I've got two of these. And one important factor when you're using a buffing wheel like this and you have different compounds, try to keep um, the compounds and the buffing wheels separate. So have a wheel for fine, another one for coarse, and that sort of thing. So you're not mixing up your buffing compounds as you go along. See if I can find a place to set that. There we go. Okay. Now I got lots of other things in here. Uh, here's here's actually a, a nice uh, wool buffing wheel. We get that in this camera. And I've also got a Morse taper on that. And that's been set up for a long time. And I can't remember where I got that Morse taper, but I'm sure you can find them. It's got a a bolt and a nut right here. And be careful that doesn't run into your project. You'll mess it up. Anyway, I got some other things in here. Uh, not terribly important. I don't want to spend a lot of time on, on these things. This is um, a foam wheel that I use with uh, maybe a polishing compound. It, you know, it's a little bit more of a, a liquid that you put on there. And that really works really well. And I've even got coarse written on that so I don't mix that up. Anyway, 
Let me put this stuff back in the box and we'll go to the next step. I'll show you a little bit more on buffing and how I approach buffing when I get to my other buffing center on the other side of the room. All right, I have a nice piece of box elder chucked up into my lathe here. And the surface is not very good. I've got some bad torn grain there. But I'm going to take a torch and I'm going to show you how I approach burnishing. And I'm going to light my torch here. Make sure everything is cleared off. Make sure all your combustibles are um, brushed off your lathe. I'm going to just do a little bit of uh, scorching on this. We'll rotate this so you can kind of see what I'm doing from that front camera. Okay, I've done a little bit more scorching off camera and this is certainly not a project. I could maybe make a couple boxes out of this or a hollow form. I'm just taking a little uh, brush. I think that looks like brass and I'm just going to go over that surface a little bit and I want the, the wood below exposed, some of that lighter wood. And I can certainly take some uh, sandpaper. Now you can see the dust. Uh, maybe, maybe you can. All right. So I'm going to find a brush and we'll just kind of sweep that surface off. There we go. Now I think I'm going to find some sandpaper and just go over that just lightly. Now I'm doing this uh, with the lathe stationary. I don't want to create a whole cloud of this uh, sooty, sooty black dust. That should be okay right there. A little bit more dusting off there. Now, to burnish this, how do we burnish a piece of wood? My definition has always meant to me you burnish raw wood. There's no finish on this, only I've done a little bit of scorching, but that's not really uh, a finish. But you can also burnish items that have a finish on them. Um, you can burnish this with anything. If you have something smooth, um, I'm going to just take this brush handle, turn my lathe in reverse, and I'm going to just go over this. It's best if you have something that's uh, somewhat smooth. We'll just see what this, what this does. Turn the speed up just a little bit. Okay, now, what am I trying to accomplish here? Well, I'm trying to cut back this area that I've burnt, and I'm trying to make it a little bit more shiny than this area right here. All right, I was looking for my little bag full of uh, deer antlers and that'll make a good burnisher. All right, now one nice thing about an antler, it's very hard and if you sand an area, it can be very smooth and that's a good tool to burnish with. Let's just see what this does. Yeah, that worked a little bit better. I think you can now start seeing that, that shiny area. Now after I would burnish something, I would then put a clear coat on top of it. Maybe just a spray acrylic or something like that. I'm just experimenting 
And I'm going to grab a piece of sandpaper here. This is, uh, yeah, it's 220. And I'm going to just do a little bit of sanding on top of this. Because what I've done is I've created some, some circular marks on there that I don't really like. I want to get rid of those. Yeah. Then I'm going to show you one more little technique you can do when you're burnishing something like this. Now you can see pretty well right in here. This, this I haven't touched this area here, but right here where I've been burnishing it, the um, top surface has been worn away, so you can kind of see that light box elder through there. Okay, I'm going to try one more thing. I've got a drill with a buffing wheel in it, and it's already kind of dark, so I've been using it for something. that that made it even shinier you can see that right in here all right very good I'm gonna do one more thing I'll be right back I've got a little bit of uh, yellow trans tint dye and I'm gonna I'm gonna color this area right in here it's got some really cool figure so I'm gonna put a little bit of color in that and then I'm going to buff it some more and just kind of see what that looks like. Now I'm kind of rushing through this. If I did this properly, I would let this dry for half an hour or something like that. Get a lot of that color on there. And you can see right in here that yellow. So I'm going to take my paper towel just kind of rub that on there. Maybe take some of that color off so it's not splattering my cameras. And you know what? You can burnish with a paper towel. I'm not going to use a cloth. Let's turn the speed up. And it's not a bad idea to create a little bit of heat on that. So let's see what that looks like. Yeah, right in here. All right, well, in my haste, I almost forgot one of the most important materials you can burnish with. Right here. Shavings. Mahogany shavings. All right, let's get this puppy cranked up here a little bit. All right. And that's all there is to it. That really does a nice job. The only thing I really need right now is some equisetum. Nature's sandpaper, but I don't have any because I'm not near a swamp. Let's do it one more time. One more time. Here we go. And that is all you need to do a little bit of burnishing. I think when I finish this piece, I'm going to burnish that, put a little color in it. That's really cool. Now you can tell in this area, I didn't really do a lot of burnishing, but I did here. And you can see the shininess of that. Now if you're doing a piece, let's say you're doing a hollow form, that can be your finish. You can leave that just like that. And I think that's really cool. Now I'm going to find something else to burnish that with. 
I'm going to take my drill. I think that turned out pretty well. And again, I didn't really do a lot of burnishing down here. This needs to be taken off a little bit so you can see some grain, but you can see the, the sheen on that, very, very low sheen. It's not a, a gloss, certainly. All right, very good. I'm happy with that. That turned out pretty cool. Let's take this out of, out of the chuck jaws. See what it looks like. Now I like that technique and I need to do a little bit more of that. Now I can also take this piece of wood and uh, chuck this buffing wheel up in my drill press and just hold it against that and, and buff it. But uh, I think you can see what I'm going for here. And with a little bit of color, it really um, adds a little bit of uh, depth and you can put whatever color you want. So let's go over to my buffing wheel and I'll show you what I consider to be buffing. All right. Well, you are looking at my uh, buffing setup. These are 15 inch wheels that I get from Stuart McDonald, who is a guitar uh, making outfit. I have not used my buffing wheels since I moved to Billings. So I need to clean them off and I've got a wire brush. The wheels are moving forward and I just need to hold that wire brush in the lower part of the wheel. I've got a firm grip on it and I've also got dust mask on because I'm creating a bunch of fine lint or whatever that is. So clean that off and then the next step is to load the wheels up with some buffing compound. All right, now what I am showing you are three different uh, liquid compounds I use for buffing. On the left is a swirl remover. On the middle uh, bottle is a polishing compound. It's medium. And then on the right is a coarse polishing compound. So I use these three polishing compounds in conjunction with this foam wheel I chuck up into my drill press ordinarily. I can put that in a handheld drill and that works fine. And I saturate this with water and I buff the pieces that I finish with lacquer with this particular pad. All right, now these are the three compounds I use on my buffing wheels. And I'll show you how I do that in just a second. I have three grits. On the left is the extra fine, in the middle is the fine, and on the right is the medium. These are Menzerna, and I get these from Stuart McDonald. And I'll put a link up in the description below the video. So let's go over on the buffing wheel and we'll do a little bit of buffing. All right, you are looking at a little hollow form. It's box elder in a very nice burl. Now I'm going to charge my wheel up with some of the medium grit. And I find this works really well. The buffing process really is an abrasive. It's a very fine sandpaper, if you will. Not really sandpaper, but... Uh, you charge up your wheel with a coarse, medium, fine, extra fine grit. After I've applied 10 or 15 coats of lacquer to a piece like this, I will sand up to about 12,000 grit using Penn Turner's sandpaper. Then I take it to the buffing wheel and polish it up even more than that with the finer grits of my compound. And I said before that it's important that you keep your wheels separate. I use this left wheel for the medium grit, which is the coarsest grit I use. And then the other wheel on the right side I use for the step up, which is the fine polishing compound. 
<coughs> now I've got a pair of rubber gloves on and that helps me maintain a good grip on this piece because this is completely finished and I just picked it up from my photo room. It was sitting there in a box. Doesn't hurt to take that back on the lathe and polish it up a little bit. And that's all there is to it. Hold that on the lower part of your wheel with a firm grip and just hit all the surfaces on that piece. All right, not much to buffing. Okay, <laughs> so there's a little bit of buffing, not a whole lot. And according to my definition of buffing, you need to buff a finish that you've applied. In this case, it's some lacquer on this little hollow form with lots of crazy grain in it. And I didn't color it because there's enough going on in this little piece. Um, what'll happen on your buffing wheel is you'll get a little bit of that dust on your piece and you just wipe that down with a soft cloth. I think there's a lot more um, to burnishing. I think that's a little bit more complicated. Anyway, I hope this wasn't confusing, but I had to go on what I see as buffing and burnishing. Anyway, simple definition turned into a complicated issue, and I appreciate you hanging in there with me. This is Sam in Montana. Uh, subscribe to my channel, please. That helps me a lot. Like my videos, leave a comment, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And if you're coming through Billings, Montana, stop in, visit me, or take a class. I've got some really nice lathes set up here and I've almost got this shop in working order. So thank you very much and I will talk to you next time.